decorating on glazeware with metal oxide powder colours. Now they're called, it's called on glaze because it's literally on the glaze. So first of all you have your biscuit ware, then that's been biscuit fired, then it's been dipped in glaze and fired again and brought into us as this on glaze ware. Now in here we're painting and decorating all the aspects of decorating ware. So we're lithographing, colour banding, enamelling, freehand painting of flatware, your cups, saucers, teapots. We do figures, flowers, birds and animals. Now you don't normally get that when you're in the industry. You're trained to do one thing and that's all you do really. I was trained as a flower painteress by Colport to paint flower bowls like these. Now it's two years training at a bench like this one and after two years they said I've made the grade and I could go piecework. That was very good of them. <laughs> That's working very hard and very fast to get your money because each piece has a price and that was more or less all you got. Now when you're doing freehand we try to get everyone the same but it's virtually impossible. Um, but there again, that's what you're paying for, the individuality of each piece. If you wanted everything the same, you'd have it done lithographed, not like this freehand painting. Need another little brush too now. These are not called brushes to us in the trade, they're actually called pencils. But if I told you I was working with a pencil, painting with a pencil, you'd think I'd gone mad, so it's just easier to say a brush. They're made of sable and squirrel hair, only grey squirrel, red are protected, so we do a bit for them as well. When we've painted and decorated all the ware, we fire it all ourselves as well, and we fire it in the box kiln there. It's fired at 800 centigrade, and it'll take all night to do the firing, and it'll take about three or four hours next day, opening the kiln door a little bit at a time over that period to drop the temperature down gradually. If you open that door straight away, everything in there would crack. So it really is a long, slow process to do this decorating of ware. We mix the metal oxide powder colours, usually with turpentine and fat oil, into something like this on the tile to use. I say usually because if we're doing something like the figure or the vase, a larger area, we wouldn't use turps to mix the colours with. It dries up too quickly because it's evaporating as you're using it. So if you're trying to get all the way around, say, the figure in one go, you get part way round, your colours would be dry where you started, you'd have a harsh line. So we use cloves or aniseed oil to do that with, to mix the colours with, and that just keeps the colours wet a lot longer. Um, when I was working for Coalport, I was actually doing 40 pieces a day like these. Uh, so you'd have 10 of those, 10 of those, perhaps 10 of them put in but 40 pieces a day on average. There was 34 paintresses in our decorating shop and the average was between 35 and 45 pieces per day. I did piecework for Coalport for 13 years and only left then to have a family. And those girls continued painting that amount of work for a lot of years after I'd left. It makes you wonder where it's now all gone to. I can't believe that the industry has gone as much as it has, not in my lifetime anyway. When you're training uh, yeah. and you're a youngster yeah. um, and you weren't made piecework, you weren't allowed to sign on the doll when they got short time. So we were shipped out to other factories and I was sent to Tuscan, China, which was just up the road here until a few months ago they just knocked it down. And I was put into the burnishing shop, so you didn't go into the same trade that you're trying to learn. I was put into the burnishing shop with the burnishing ladies in there and they taught me how to do that. Burnishing is when you've got liquid gold like this and you paint it onto the ware with these brushes. When it's fired it comes out of the kiln still quite dark brown and dull and you have to do what they call burnish it up. So you have a small pot of water, a small pot of silver sand, that's just coarse fine sand, a cloth. You dip the cloth in the water dip it in the sand and you rub it on the gold to rub it right. Yeah. Rub too hard, you rub the gold off. Don't rub it hard enough, you don't get it bright enough. So again, it's a trade that has to be taught and learned. And myself and Dawn, one of the other young girls, was there for six months. And we'd had enough. We want, we'd heard Colport had gone back to five days and we wanted to go back and train as a flower painteress. 
So Thursday dinner time, we walked up the road to Denton, China. We did a trade test and the lady said, oh yes, you've shown promise, you can start on Monday. So we wrote out our notices and handed them in. And on Friday morning, our boss from Stoke Colport came to us, Clive Cartledge, and he says, what's this I hear? We said, we're leaving, we've had enough, you don't want us back. He says, I know I've got your notices here. He tore them up in front of him of us and he said right back down Colport Monday morning so we got a job back. <laughs> also when you're training part of your job is to make sure that the ladies are seen okay that they've got the turps every day, make sure they've got enough fat oil to work with and make sure they've got the cloth. You also have to take their breakfast orders every day and believe it or not I was very shy and quiet in them days and you know I found this horrendous really. We had to go to the chip shop twice a week and to get 34 ladies' orders right at the chip shop every you know, dinner time, Wednesday and a Friday, it was just unbelievably difficult and I hated it. And I rarely got the order right. <laughs> and they used to give you your chips in brown paper and newspapers in those days. And I remember having a bag of fritters and I was running because we were late as usual down the street and the bag tore and the fritters went rolling down the street so I, I had to share my chips with the girls that didn't have the fritters. 